All right, how's it going, guys? Enough with the theatrical music. We had a dev diary come out yesterday, so I'm a little bit late. I was busy yesterday, unable to cover it. So I just wanted to have a live stream with you guys to dig into this. Uh, Paradox did give me the materials on this dev diary ahead of time, and I have skimmed through this, but this is going to be my first impressions here. I have not looked through this in detail, and I don't have, like, notes, and I'm going to be talking off of the top of my head here, so if uh, there's corrections that need to be made, please make them in chat. I uh, love being corrected. Uh, I love trying to figure out, you know historically what happened and um come to a consensus all right so let's get into it here boys developer diary italy number one so we have the top picture here that looks like fighter two with north african camo on it not quite sure what they're showing here but that looks like a piece of blue like the allies landed or something like that we got some panzer fours down here so I think they're showing off all the new models, and I think there's something like 80. There's also 12 new songs. This is going to be a full DLC that comes out. And let me tell you, like, I, I've had some commenters say, like, um, it's not going to be like a huge DLC. You know, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Let me tell you, I've seen what the developers have given me, and it's going to be like a no-step-back-sized DLC. It's crazy. Um, so you're going to get the new air designer. No Step Back was the tank designer. And you're going to get a massive Italy focus tree. It's it's blurred out here. Um, they've kind of... We'll see if they show the whole focus tree. But they, they have part of it classified. So I don't even know what it looks like. Thanks, Malarkey. Appreciate it. I think I saw your comment on YouTube as well on one of my videos. So welcome in if you haven't been here before. Okay, so developer diary, Italy number one. So there's going to be subsequent dev diaries, I suppose. And I'm just going to go off of this. I'm worried about like violating an nda or something like that so this is from the paradox forms website so you literally have to you can go on the community tab of steam and it'll point you to this website over here where you can see the whole dev diary so apparently they maxed out steam and weren't able to put this on steam so that says quite a lot All right, ciao a tutti. Sorry, my Italian is it is not the greatest, so bear with me. Mono de Zombie, here to welcome you all to a new Hearts of Iron for Dev Diary. So this is the developer that's putting out the Dev Diary. Mono de Zombie. Hand of Zombie? As you know, summer is coming, and before my mind gets too distracted by pleasures of Swedish summer, I wanted to tell you about the first country to be revealed for the upcoming Hoi 4 expansion by Blood Alone. As you might have guessed, the country in question can be none other than La Bella Italia. So the reason why I'm doing a live stream and we're going to be taking a deeper dive is because <laughs> Italy has been so anticipated by... The Hearts of Iron 4 community, it deserves a deep dive and a lot of attention. Now, will you get a video about the Switzerland dev diary? Yes. Is it going to be like an hour? No, <laughs> it's not going to be an hour. Uh, the Ethiopian dev diary should be really interesting as well. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be chilling here for a while going through everything. Similar to how we did it last time for No Step Back, his first dev diary will focus on the content related to the historical and common branches of the Italian focus tree. In short, everything that comes for free with the Avalanche patch. 
Note that some content might change based on previous DLCs being active or not. Okay. Yeah, that's an area that everyone struggles with. And I get a lot of questions like, what DLC do you need for what? I'm pretty good at that now, but I'm not good at like, if you have one DLC, but you don't have the other one, like the, the one-off situations, I'm not good at that. And uh, one of my more recent popular live streams, I did a no DLC Germany. And that informed me a lot about what the DLCs bring to the base game. <laughs> zombie hand, I guess. Yeah, mono de zombie. He's Swedish, apparently. Maybe he's a uh, Spanish upbringing, though. Who knows? As usual, keep in mind that everything about to see is still WIP, so things might change before release. Chad, do you know what WIP is? I I don't know. I see this all over the, the uh, thumbnails that they gave me. You'll see some placeholder art, unlocalized text, and WFP values. Thanks for your understandings. Okay, so they're basically saying that this can change. Which, things will change anyways. There's going to be no perfect balance. If you've uh, seen <clears throat> my last coverage of the last dev diary, they're going to have a naval balance. Uh, pfft, who knows if it's actually going to change the meta or not. Like, you could completely not change MP meta, or the meta will change slightly. Like, instead of heavy cruisers. Like, and it's gonna, if they don't change the doctrine, I'm skeptical if the meta is gonna change. Because you could easily pick up the doctrine fairly easily, not have to go fully into like uh, a huge naval doctrine, and then you can still achieve a high soft attack. So, they're gonna have to nerf soft attack somehow and navs simultaneously because the navs you should be able to get all the capitals with and then the soft attack should get all the screens out of the way and then you have your one-two punch there okay but anyway and having said that comida i don't know what that means maybe like oh commence let's commence all right, so you have some new badges here. There's a North African looking guy. You got a lion. Um, this reminds me of the artwork from cards. That's cool, lion for a day. Um, this also looks like a group of colonial troops, perhaps. And you've got Victor Emmanuel III up there again, a new badge here uh, for the, the Ital Italian national spirit, two new badges. But I'm glad to see that Victor Emmanuel is still there. Manny, what's up, dude? It's good to see you. Thanks for the tier three. Appreciate it. Looks like you're at the first level. Yep, work in progress for sure. Welcome, legends. Italy joined the Triple Entente in the Great War after having been prom promised several territory gains. Trentino in South Tyrol. Austrian Littoral. Eastern Freely, Istria, Dalmatia, expansion of African colonies in small parts of Carnolia. I don't think they got any part of Austria, though. I could be wrong. Albania <clears throat> and Antalya. So obviously they got Albania. However, many of these promises would not be honored by the Allies during the Treaty of Versailles, with Italy receiving only a bit of land expected, no expansion in Africa. Okay, so they didn't get... This is World War One. They didn't get Albania, obviously. I think they did get a piece of Austria, if this is talking about World War One, No expansion in Africa, no Fium, Dalmatia, Carnolia, while the cost of the war had been dire for the country, which was highly in debt after the war. True. All this caused high social unrest, leading to Benio Rosso and later to the rise of fascism with Benito Mussolini at the helm. Through propaganda, violence, murder, and intimidation, the fascists managed to entrench fascism in Italy. Implementing a corporatist economy system and pursuing aggressive foreign policies with the ambition to expand Italian territory in the Balkans. Irredentism sentiment was fairly generalized. So someone said it would be cool. 
someone said in my YouTube comments, it would be cool if there was Italian irredentism, like in Kaiserreich, how uh, there is that. So it looks like they're thinking about that. Now, I don't know what irredentism means, like nationalism or something like that, but I have played Kaiserreich and I, you know, I have chosen those focuses before. But you guys could tell me in chat or the comment section. I know Vare. Whoa, well, let's go, boys. Jacob. Oh, dude. Are you tier one? I can't even tell what tier you are. But thanks for the channel membership, Jacob. And thanks for coming to the live stream. Okay. During the early, did I skip this? All this caused high social unrest leading to Benia Rosso and later the rise of fascism. Okay, okay. During the early 20s and 30s, the campaign for the pacification of Libya resulted in the com commitment of multiple atrocities. And in 1935, Italy invaded Ethiopia. This action was condemned by the League of Nations, which was a joke. However, the League of Nations did not take strong steps to discourage an Italian military buildup around the Ethiopian border or took any drastic measures against Italy during the war out of fear of antagonizing Italy to the point of pushing Mussolini to an alliance with Germany. The Italo-Ethiopian conflict soon became the scenario of many more atrocities and war crimes. And after this little piece of historical contents, context, let's take a look at how Italy looks in game in 1936. Okay, so it looks like they usually start off with the first three national spirits. These other five are completely new. Just co commenting on what they said before, uh, it would be interesting to see if they got all the territory that they were promised, how the politics in the country would, uh, would look. I'm speculating that Mussolini would still come into power because when you start murdering a bunch of people, there's no one left. You be you become powerful. It's kind of how uh, dictatorship works. So I don't know. It's probably better that they didn't give all that stuff. But, you know, the Treaty of Versailles was used as propaganda for World War Two, basically. So I don't know if they had treated Germany better and Italy better. Um, maybe World War Two doesn't happen. I don't know. What do you guys think? The other thing is, like, this invasion of Ethiopia is just, like, Mussolini has to prove how powerful he is to everyone, and it's kind of ridiculous. Like, they obviously lost more than they gained. It's obviously a tragic thing. There was war crimes that occurred. Um, yeah, not good whatsoever. Uh, what Mussolini was done, was doing, and Mussolini was probably a sociopath because he didn't seem to care about life that much based on the statements that we have. You know, I just need a few dead to show like to get a seat at the table. Like that type of thing is definitely like a dictator's attitude in my opinion. Um, so yeah, this everything is going south here. Okay. What do we got here? Benito Mussolini, political power gained 10%, maximum command power increase multiplier, negative 10%, a little bit of an earth there. Not, not bad. Economy trade and conscription law costs negative 15%. That's pretty good for multiplayer because that allows Italy to catch up. If you get, hmm, let's see here. This is my historical Italy build here. And I just pulled this up for reference. If you get state serves military right off the bat, you can do a lot. You combo this with independent air force and you can fully load your air advisors. So you could get the air doctrine guy and then load up everything else. So that's five for a cost of 25 political power. Absolutely broken combo. I love it. I love it for multiplayer because you can tell Germany, I got a fully maxed out fighter two and they will love you. Take it, have fun with it. Make 100, 120 mils on fighter. So anyway, let's get back to it here. We'll see if we get through this whole thing. I'll go as far as I can. 
What's up, guys? Jarrett, Pillbox, Andrea. I think that you will have the choice of switching whichever leader you want. I'm, pr I'm certain of that. So you could switch off Mussolini. I'd be, I'd be down to play that, to be honest with you, to get Victor Emmanuel up there. That'd be awesome. Your dentism wanting to incorporate or reincorporate lands that were traditionally a part of a nation. Okay. Thanks, Jared. I really appreciate that, man. You like the new stuff about Albania and the new infantry battalions. Okay. <laughs> well, <clears throat> that also plays into uh, Pillbox, your, your comment about him switching, Mussolini switching ideologies. This is just a guy hungry for power. So if you're that hellbent on power, yeah, you'll do whatever and you'll compromise your morals and you'll compromise your integrity. So he's a very low integrity guy, we can all agree. Uh, yes, I agree. Hitler was absolutely crazy, but like Mus in my opinion, Mussolini's right there. But you, you can have your own opinions here on this channel. That <laughs> I have no problem with that. We're just pontificating about history. It's a lot of fun. It wasn't until after World War II that there was... Okay. Yeah, times were different back then. We do have a, a uh, flawed perspective. Craig, what's up, brother? <laughs> Lion Tabor. Capo Supremo. Is that Captain Supreme? Il Duce. Is Il Duce is the deuce, right? He does have a pretty good nickname. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay so as you can see Mussolini now has a trait which can be upgraded throughout the focus tree more on this later Ooh, he has a trait so maybe the maximum command power not much of a military thinker this guy there are, are a fair amount of starting national spirits the first three on the left you probably know from the current version as I said no changes uh, there the other five will go into detail later cool looking at the map there's been a few changes I'm going to skip over the map changes uh, but they added a lot of key points uh, cities things like that uh, victory points I was reading through earlier so they they got something in Dalmatia um, did they improve the resources here? Albania has oil. Okay, that's the one thing that Italy lacks. I know it's not that much oil, but even one or two could could really help out. The main thing with Italy is, and the reason why you want to refit instead of expand your navy, is you if you just expand your navy, in other words, build new ships instead of modifying the existing ships, your oil will be gone so fast. Your head will be spinning. So I am more on the modification side. You'll consume all the oil for the Axis just with your massive Navy. Um, you're not using your Navy that much, but if you need it, yeah, you want some oil reserves. So that is something that Italy needs to address in every game. Okay, fair amount of victory points around Italy. Compliance in Libya has drastically reduced from 70% to 35%. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> so guns are now at a premium, guns and manpower. Compliance basically means you don't get as many mills, sieves, resources. There's not a lot in North Africa, but it will consume guns and manpower. So you are going to need to have a strategy to combat resistance. Resistance scales with... Um, compliance as well oh man a modder's nightmare huh pillbox he has a bulgaria mod is it on andrea
Well, on the Hitler topic, you know, he famously saw like seven or eight of his buddies, you know, die. He went off on a mission and came back and a shell had landed right in the middle of his buddies and they were all dead. He was in the war for four years off and on. I think he got wounded twice. How this doesn't mentally affect you is beyond me. Obviously, it mentally affected him and uh, you don't come back from things like that the same and... It, it makes sense in that con you have to have con context to Hitler. The problem with Hitler is he goes from that to be a being a great orator. And then you synergize the the trauma he had in World War One with his great oratory skills. And you, you got a recipe for disaster. OK, in Eritrea, Asmara is no longer on the coast. Some provinces have been split. OK, I don't care about the provinces as much. Oh, look at this. So we got a new company. These are support companies, and I believe they're regiments organized into the columns or battalions. First, we have the Militia Battalion, which in Italy is used to represent the black shirts. Okay, so they sent four of these to Spanish Civil Wars for the black shirts. This is what I'm excited about. So you can actually play out like the Spanish Civil War like properly. We'll have new 3D model. And check out my historical Italy build if you want to see the differences. Because I try to do the best job that I can playing historical as historically as possible. I put that out like day before yesterday. I just got it out as quickly as I possibly could knowing that this was going to drop. Militias are a new type of infantry unit. Less organization but lower training time. That sucks. Organization is a really important stat. <clears throat> so you're not going to be able to blend these militia templates with anything that defeats organization. I'm pretty sure support companies lower organization, but if you just put shovels in them, it should be serviceable. Combat width of 12 should be fine. Combat width is not <clears throat> as important of a thing anymore. Evil genius for sure. Yeah, I would like historical division templates, but ones that are balanced. Like, this is a pretty crappy template, but it doesn't, like, it gives you that historical RP while not, you know, giving a bunch of templates that are going to, you know, make multiplayer, like, ruin multiplayer or something like that. This shouldn't matter to multiplayer at all. Currently, you have to take out more than 90% of Italy to capitulate. Okay. It looks like they added a lot of uh, VPs in the north. So if you take that, you could, you could cap them, which historically is what happened, right? They got all the way up to the Alps. Or they got halfway and then capped them. And then they stopped at the Alps or something because it was going to be a bloodbath to try to cross. Which in game is represented when I do my builds and you go through Austria. That's a no, no guys do not go through Austria. It's it's awful. Even with Mountaineers, like I would just hold a line there against the AI with Mountaineers. All right, so here's the models of the black shirts and Looking pretty good. You need a helmet, brother. Most important piece of military equipment. Uh, looks like they got the Carcano. Not entirely sure, but it does look like a carbine rifle. Um, so they, they most likely would have outfitted uh, these units with uh, the Carcano. And we had, we had great discussions on the Carcano on my last video. And someone did... I want to do a uh, video reviewing Ian's from Forgotten Weapons, his his uh, I want to do a reaction video on the Carcano because he explains a lot about it in the history. But the military like the higher caliber, so they made two million of the 1891 type, um, not the modern uh, caliber, which had a more intermediate round, which, as you know, today is the preferred round of most militaries. It's not the big boy round with the long rifle. So. Yeah, the Carcano, who knows how many they made. 
but some probably somewhere in that ballpark of a hundred or two hundred thousand they gave most of those away the second new battalion is a regular infantry used to represent the large variety of non-regular units and bands that took part in both sides of the Italo-Ethiopia War and the African campaign in World War II. They will also have new 3D models in the future. Okay, this is cool. You see a saber there. All right. I don't know about the stats. Like, I'm not a big, like, stat guy. I'm not going to be able to tell you if these stats are different off the top of my head. They look like a normal infantry division, maybe with uh, bonuses to the desert here. And this is important. The adjusters at the bottom is very important. These guys have adjusters. This looks normal. This looks like they're only going to be good in North Africa or Ethiopia in a desert. But the black shirts look like they have combat capabilities all over the place. So bear that in mind. That Fez hat, that's cool. This is much needed. These, these icons are really good. You know, Ron, I'm not too sure what the fortresses look like in Austria. I know that there is, there are fortresses or there were fortresses along the border with France. I would assume that there would be, uh, Fortresses up here as well. In Tyrol, I believe you're referring to. There's not in Hearts of Iron 4, but I do think that the French have fortresses here in Hearts of Iron 4. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that point. Oh, we're getting the plane models. Okay. Irregulars are also a new type of infantry unit with overall slightly lower stats, especially org, but to a minor degree, also more morale, attack, and defense. However, they have slightly more HP, lower supply and equipment needs above all. Okay, so that could be good to make speed bumps over ports and things like that. What I did note was there's at least over 20, it was like 22 or 24 coastal divisions that Italy had during World War II. So that might simulate that. Important bonuses in hills, forests, deserts, and mountains, so they might be valuable to both garrisoning your colonies in Africa or fill gaps. Hills, forests, mountains. Okay. Fair enough. Um, in the front lines with rough terrain without having too much supply impact. So these are troops that are going to be high entrenchment sit. And this synergizes with the generals that... Italy had available to them. We'll see what the generals are like uh, previous to this patch. And after looking through the generals, like you have all the generals down here at the bottom. I believe, um, who is this guy? Balbo died to friendly fire in North Africa. Bono died to a firing squad later in the war, like 43 um, so right off the bat, you have two generals that died. Uh, Graziani was dismissed in like 42. I think Cavalero was around the whole war. I'm not entirely sure. I think Messe was. Messe grew to be, um, I think he was the successor of Rommel in North Africa. Just merely like, so I don't know how long he was commanding the forces in North Africa, maybe a few months, maybe half a year. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, there, none of these generals went to Spanish civil war that I know of. Maybe they did and they rose through the ranks, but it's hard to tell. You'd have to do a deep dive in that. Do you consider 7.62 uh, an intermediate cartridge? Because I've heard it both ways. I've heard people talk about it as an intermediate cartridge, but I know the U.S. Special Forces like the higher caliber. However, the weight is an issue. Um, but they now have the new blackout. It's like 300 blackout, whatever they, they're calling it which makes it a little less weight, I believe, than 7.62 while increasing the power and muzzle velocity of the cartridge. 
So they had to go with a hybrid steel case so that it wouldn't blow the case off the round. So we'll see. 7.62 is a high caliber for sure. 6.8. I think that 6.8 would be an intermediate cartridge. You could beg to differ. Okay, with By Blood Alone DLC, Italy will receive a significant amount of new 3D models for planes and infantry. So allow me to tease you guys with a few of them. <clears throat> Kudos 3D artists. All right, so you got biplanes here. And I believe this was the bomber slash transport plane. I was looking at this list from World War II. Let's see here. So this this bomber behind there looks like it almost looks like what the Germans had in terms of tax. So this is an interwar tack, I would assume. But I was quite surprised at how many varieties of airplanes that the Italians had in World War Two. And this, I believe the biplanes were largely used in or given to nationalist Spain in the Spanish Civil War. And then were probably, you know, sunsetted after that because they did have like a fighter one by World War Two, I believe. All right, Pill, have a good night, man. David, it does not. Thirty odd six is minimum that you use to hunt larger game. Thirty odd six is a seven point six two round with more black powder. Yeah, the three oh six. It's a pretty big round. Okay, regarding Italian unit leaders, the generals roster has increased greatly. Okay, so maybe some of these uh, generals appeared in the Spanish Civil War. Okay, so I'm looking this up here. Um, okay, the Royal Italian Navy played a substantial role in Mediterranean blockade and ultimately Italy supplied machine guns, artillery, aircraft, tank acts, the Avizion Legionaria, and the Corpo Truppe Voluntare to the national cause, the nationalist cause. And they donated 70,000 men. Hmm. See if I can get a list of the generals. I think this is going to take me too long. But I did have it up, so perhaps some of these uh, were in the Spanish Civil War. Let's take a look at the stats real quick. They're minimal. This guy for a level one with a defender looks like he's, this guy is your top general here. Pietro Pintor. Uzoni. Okay. That's familiar. Messe cut his teeth in the Italo-Turkic War. Okay. You do have a mountain guy. Right off the bat, a level one mountain guy. That is... Actually, that guy could be considered better. If you grind this guy, that would be really good. The political advisor list is also way larger. So what I noticed here is they give you some non-aligned guys. Hierarch, Minister of Justice... Hierarch, 
So I'm assuming that these are non-aligned. Everything with a uh, hierarchy in them. So they probably give you some points into non-aligned. Elusive Gentleman. I forgot if that's a new guy. Rota? Maybe he's not. Oh my goodness. Oh, there it is. You have to create an intelligence agency. Obviously. I didn't do that in my historical build. I thought it would be too much micro. All right. Quartermaster general, captain of industry, silent workhorse, financial expert. I don't remember the financial expert. Armaments organizer. War industrialist, so armaments organizer sounds new. There was always a Prince of Terror, but I think this guy is different. Marinelli? The, okay, the Hierarch guys are cheaper. That's interesting. Probably because you have to burn a lot of political power to, get, to go non-aligned. Prince Filibierto is a royal prince. Okay, right there. So he's Victor Emmanuel's son. <clears throat> Was that the one that they tried to assassinate? Going off memory here, guys, so please correct me. It was something like... What's the conspiracy theory that Bulgaria tried to... There was a conspiracy that Bulgaria tried to off, like, an Italian prince or something. So then Victor Emmanuel had... Um, God, who's the Bulgarian kings that, that perhaps that they killed him? I'm not sure. That's just a conspiracy theory, so don't listen to that. Did somebody say Umberto? There are also a bunch of new Italian designers, and I'd like to give a big shout out to our artists because the 2D art for this new expansion is looking really good. Um, yeah, I like the, the artwork here. Cantieri, Navale, Tosi, submarine designers, submarine. De they had a lot of smaller, like mini subs and stuff, but more like suited toward to the Mediterranean, not to the open ocean. Maki is still there. Naval aircraft designer. If you really want to simp out on naval aircraft, but you're giving, like in multiplayer, you're giving your fighter to uh, Germany. So you probably want to continue with the light aircraft designer. If you want to do naval RP, though, <laughs> get like Nav 2, max out gun. You can just like take out the English Navy. He's a nephew? Okay. <laughs> he was the last king of Italy for 30 days. Was that during the, the post-war transition? Last but not least, we will not go deep, too deep into the Italo-Ethiopian war today, so I'll just say that with BBA dragging the war forever to form XP might not be a great idea. There are systems in place that will seriously damage Italy if the war drags on for too long both diplomatically and internally. Okay. So like in multiplayer, you have to have like a cutoff, like the mods revolve around stopping the Ethiopian war quick so that Ethiopia can't grind because then they have Spanish civil war, uh, things like that. And uh, yeah, it would be highly, a long war is highly damaging to a country's manpower, economy, etc. cetera. Um, so even though you do get the experience on the generals, you know, in real life, you might lose the general um, so that all that experience is lost. Uh, but yeah, like a moderate war would be better. And then tell me what you guys think in chat <clears throat> about the argument between February 1937, end of Ethiopian war or May 1936. Which one do you think? You know, they took the capital in May 36. Okay. Uh, Haile Selassie fled the country, the government's in exile, but the troops fought on in the field, you know, for the better part of a year. So I'm not sure how to look at that. 
Cad, thanks for the sub. The sub goal went up. It works. Keep feeding me those subs, boys. I love it. Subs going to get nerfed? To me, if the navs can take out the subs, the navs target the slower things first is the way I see it working. And this is purely observational. I'm not like a big sit stack guy like 71 cloak will sit there and like test out certain features what i notice is you put the navs up they take out the subs first and the capital ship second so that tells me subs are the slowest uh naval vehicle in the game capital you know the capital ships are the second slowest so the the navs take out the slow vehicles first um so i think that they're going to change that they're going to more of like a hitbox type targeting system instead of a speed i don't know i don't know how that's gonna work it seems to me that like biplanes wouldn't do too well against subs whereas more of your like tax would like because the tax could be fairly high up hard to spot and then have radar on the tax right so it'd be cool if they had a radar module and then basically go into a silent dive. That's the way they used to do it. At night as well, put a spotlight on the sub and just light them up in a silent dive. They turn off their engines. I think that's the way to do it because, you know, you're limited with the biplanes. The biplane strat, would they go low to try to avoid the AA. So if you're firing at something that's all, skimming the surface of the ocean, you could fire too low or too high, right? So you could fire into the ocean or above them. And then all they needed to do was point the plane at the whatever, or maybe a little ahead of whatever the target was and release the torpedo. The torpedo does the rest. The time of destroy. I thought it already was the time of the destroyer cred. Cred's a big, like, uh, he likes that radar. He's a big radar fan. I think that there's too many sacrifices, though, because you have to worry about air. And um, obviously it helps out air, but you have to worry about your army, too, and your industry. So it, you're really spread out if you go for radar. I'm not a big radar guy. Well, the way to Innovare to stop the ship spam is just to increase the oil consumption on the destroyers. That's how you do it. And then, <laughs> so like, I don't think they put out too many ships in World War II. I think they refitted like a lot of World War I ships and then put out a few ships. Because like, take Japan, for instance, they didn't have enough oil to run their Navy. So <laughs> half of their Navy sat in the docks the whole war, you know. And they were running out the, the uh, carriers, though, the carrier groups. Because they, they saw the power of the carrier. Militarily speaking, Japan is, is very interesting and was quite advanced at the beginning of the war. But they had been fighting wars, right? The whole time. Navs target the left ships first. If you have carriers, they focus carriers. Okay. Flak destroyer meta. Okay. So if naval targeting has changed... To hitbox instead of speed, you put AA on destroyers. Okay. Yeah, sub three is kind of OP. I, I never go sub three. All right. But now that we know a bit more about the initial status of Italy, let's just take a look at the new focus tree, excluding alt history branches. Um, okay, so it used to be like the focus tree was over here, and now it's like 10 times the size, like five times the size, we'll say. And I can't really tell. This isn't this isn't clear, and they blanked out this. So is this the Victor Emmanuel, like Kaiserreich section? I'm not too sure. I'd have to take a, a look. I'm not, they don't want to show us, though, I'm sure. 
As you can see, the Italian tree has grown considerably, hopefully making future Italian playthroughs more flavorable, flavorful, and with significantly more decision making, allowing for different playset styles and strategies. Let's get started with the leftmost branch, the colonial branch. So you still have Ethiopian War Logistics, Ministry of Italian Africa, okay. Develop Ethiopia, Libya, Eritrea, Somalia land. Okay, hopefully they don't go too overboard on this and hopefully they're not 70 day focuses. I bet you they're like 30, 35 days. Because uh, I don't think that they develop these areas IRL too much. Okay, the prospect for oil is still down here. Libyan railways are at the bottom. That makes sense. Italian colonies in Africa included Libya and North Africa unified as single colony in 1934 in Eritrea and Italian Somaliland in the Horn of Africa, which were unified in 1936 along with the Ethiopian territories into the province of Italian East Africa as governorates. So there's that. 36. That date. Okay, they were incorporated as protectorates. Governorates. So does that mean it was a puppet or not? Because it seems like they annexed when they took out Ethiopia, they made it one big kingdom that Victor Emmanuel was the governor of or something like that. In game, this branch will all allow you to manage and boost your co colonial territories and your colonial troops so you know they nerfed the compliance in north africa but they give you colonial police force down here so uh a horizontal change so they give you an opportunity here to perhaps mitigate the compliance loss the focus will also unlock a decision category to deal with colonial management. Initially, it will allow you to train, disband, and reorganize irregulars, the latter strengthening irregular divisions with more battalions, be it reg irregular infantry, cavalry, or cavalry in a recon company. And it does seem like Italy was big on recon companies. They had those excellent, like, uh, recon uh, vehicles. U.S. oil-rich nation could run out all those ships, huh? If every country was limited by man equipment that was used in the war, U.S. built 90% of their Navy during the war. Wow, I can believe that. Nothing much, Plato. Good to see you, man. The U.S. had 98 divisions. That's massive. It was pretty much a puppet. That's, I mean, I like to make them puppets because there's no real way of describing it. And then I like taking the division templates and then the puppets use the manpower and the guns from that nation. That's the way I like to play it historically. I know that that's controversial, but to me, the divisions are more important than the way that the colors of the countries look. be like six combat wise so you had uh divisions that were more like regimental strength something like that okay so we are colonial management train irregulars disband irregulars reorganize irregular bands so they should make these uh colonial troops really weak so yeah like a six combat width <laughs> which might actually buff them <laughs> But you lose with a combat with that low, they lose equipment super quick. Equipment and manpower. Uh, which would actually be balanced for a colonial um, irregular, you know, group of fighting group, however that is, regiment or whatever, division, whatever you want to call it. Because they would most likely be eager to stop fighting. 
Developing the different colonial colonies will add a level of infrastructure and a building slot in some states. Completing the focus, regional development will not only add a factory, naval base, and extra building slot to some previously developed states, it will also improve the colonial police occupation law and unlock decisions to add a building slot and increase the state category of your less developed states, adding a small compliance boost in the process. Okay, to me, this is kind of RP. So you can buff the states that you control. Regional development, local resources increase. Okay, that's cool. And then you have Benghazi down here. Further down the branch to the left, you can improve your Libyan colon colony to get the most out of it. Here you will find some resources and infrastructure, railway construction, which by the way, will also increase compliance in the affected states to represent the employment of local workers in the area. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know, for the U.S. that sounds like a lot. 98 divisions that are well equipped. And you got to think that the U.S. had allies. And the Russians obviously had a lot. So they didn't really have to do much. They had to show up. I guess the uh, Pacific was a different story. That's a thick boy division, 15K. You'd think that like a normal Ger German division was probably like 11 or 12. Under strength was probably only like 8K or something. Anuvare, did you ever make that move to Alaska? At the bottom right of the branch, you manage your colonial troops and irregular troops. You can choose to assign colonial troops to police duty, improving your occupation law one last time, or you can strengthen your Ascari troop core, getting new divisions in each colony and unlocking Ascari generals. All right, cool. So a bunch of different generals there. If this is the base general, this guy is looks like a Chad. It looks like they're going to come up with a new badge there. He's got Desert Fox, and uh, I believe this is the naval invasion one. They, they're probably going to nerf this. I doubt that they keep that. Yep. Because Japan was fighting a huge conflict with, uh, you know, China. So they needed more divisions. No switch. Isn't it uh, cost of living cheaper in Alaska? No. It's got to be more expensive, right? Because goods don't flow up there as fast. So there'd be a scarcity. Probably be incredibly expensive in Alaska, huh? Finally, you can boost your irregular troops spawning some extra divisions and unlocking the iconic irregular leaders, Amadio Gorlet, also known as Commandant Diavo Diavolo. A very interesting guy, by the way, and IMHO, one of the coolest new focus icons. Yeah, I like this. So this guy's on horseback. He's got a carbine on his back. Create irregular units in, in owned and controlled colonies. One irregular infantry division, two cavalry divisions. Two cavalry divisions, one cavalry division. So if you get this guy as well, and he's like a cav guy, this could be viable early game. You get a bunch of cav divisions, that's awesome. Amadeo Gullet, so maybe they're going to get a picture for him later. And is this Bunker Buster? It looks different than Bunker Buster. Maybe they accidentally uh, leaked this. No, nah, it's got to be Bunker Buster. Oh, he is a Cav guy. Good attack stats. Good supply stats for a level three. You could get him up to a level four. That's looking great. Maybe this is the political party badge. 
You know how if you go down one tree, like you'll lose a bunch of generals? Maybe that's what that is. Yeah, it is different. Look at this bunker one's different than this one up here. So I wonder what that represents. Huh. I guess time will tell. Baltasare. And now let's talk about the industrial branch. Okay, Italian highways comes first. It looks like it's at the top. A lot of players will want to start here. Railroad, railway innovations? Biochi Muzion, Muziona. Fresca small arms industry. It looks like this is the mill path. Increase artillery production. As I said in my last video, um, it didn't seem like they had a lot of artillery in Italy. It looked like they had a lot of small arms, though. So bigger guns were more scarce for Italy. They didn't have a very good uh, gun manufacturing industry, from what I can tell. First things first, Italy has now two initial national spirits related to industry that can be improved throughout the focus tree. Is Istituto per la Ricostruzione Industriale was born in 1933 as a temporary state institution sponsored by Benito Mussolini and Guido Young, among others, and with Alberto at the helm, the IRA became the owner of the three largest Italian banks and many large companies such as Ansaldo, Alfa Romeo, CDRA, and Terni. So these if these were the companies that were produced by Mussolini, most likely they're corrupt. So they should get some sort of nerf because they had all these companies, but they weren't able to really ramp up production that much. Or at least that's my thinking on the subject. They weren't as good as the Germans at mass production. Random question. Have you ever played War in the Pacific or any other similar games? I have not, George. Thanks for coming, George, to the live stream. The smaller German divisions had about 15K troops at its max. Yeah, Anchorage would be cheaper than the rest, huh? Andrew, Andrew always shows up. Thanks for coming, Andrew. You're Chad. The IRI went on to exist decades after World War II. Well, a lot of the things were a lot of the companies did, like Honda, like, you know, BMW, Mercedes-Benz. They, the countries were bombed and destroyed. They had to, the allies had to give them an economy so that the, the new nations and the new governments could flourish. So, you know, if you look at GDPs over time, like, Germany and Japan did incredibly well after the war, actually, after their economy went down to zero uh, because the, the companies kept on going after the war. So that makes total sense to me. I mean, Beretta still makes uh, small arms and still sells them commercially, and they're a great company. And you have all the, the cool uh, Italian car companies still out there. All right. So the IRI as a state institution continued on. That's very interesting. Italian military industry was significantly smaller compared to the other major companies in the war. Most raw materials had to be important and there was a little stockpile of resources when Italy entered the war. In fact, many Italian merchant ships were in foreign ports at that time and were immediately impounded. Furthermore, the Italo-Ethiopian War, also known as the Italian Abyssinian Abyssinian War and Italian massive involvement in the Spanish Civil War on the side of the nationalists had an extraordinarily high cost, not only for the Italian treasury, 
but also in terms of equipment and lives. So this is Mussolini basically overstepping and showing to the world that he's great and he has all this cool military equipment and he's helping out, you know, allied countries and stuff like this. And uh, it wasn't very smart because as I've said in previous videos, he gave a lot of equipment away uh, to Japan, to Finland, etc., cetera, and uh, it nerfed the Italian military. Going into World War II, but Germany said that they would not attack in 39, that they would attack later. So they were not planning on this. Most of the military's budget during the late 30s was consumed by these wars, seriously hampering a very much needed military modernization. Finally, the huge influence of the state-owned Ansaldo, part of the IRA, as mentioned above, made it harder for other companies to present new designs and get a contract, which reduced competence and didn't help keeping up acceptable production capabilities and quality in some areas, especially in tank production, where this led to an absolute monopoly in association with fiat. All right, government corruption at its best. The best company doesn't win. The company that uh, probably gave Mussolini some money won. Very true, Anavare. All right, so military industry is nerfed. Okay, this is good. As I said before, the military industry was corrupt. Back to the focus tree, the old Italian highway focus. This has been moved to the top of the industrial branch. It will now grant less Insta infrastructure, but it will add temporary state. Yeah, it was a little OP. The Italian uh, highways was fairly far down the branch. It was behind the extra research slot. But it, it if you could get there, if you could rush it, it was it is really good because it's basically like giving you sieves because the sieves in these areas uh, will manufacture a lot better. Okay, so you have like one infrastructure instead of like two or three, whatever it is. The sub branch right below will generally add some sieves and improve the IRA national spirit. You can choose between investing and developing Northern Italy or Southern Italy. I think Northern Italy would be preferable because the allies typically go like Operation Husky, which is from Sicily up. The Focus new industrialization program will unlock some industrial decisions based on the region you went for for a final boost to your civilian industry. In the central sub branch, you will find some railway lines, consumer good redu reductions. Some are temporary and some are permanently applied to IRA national spirit and your fifth research slot. All right. So you get some sieves, but they're further down. It said fifth research slot. Let's look at this. What was it again? It's an oil rig in a tractor. That's how I'm going to remember this. Right here. Okay, so right after railway, this would be a good economics building. And then look at you got the research slot right after it. Increased production, key specialization, probably hits your production efficiency cap. This would be a good, I, they're focusing on this line because this is probably the meta line right here. If you want to play MP, if you want to play a OP build, they're showing you the way that it that's going to go down. Okay, you got some military factories in there. You, you hook back, pick that up later. At the end of the branch, there's another decision to be made in order to boost your production lines, which will have a small consumer good penalty. In exchange, this will be a recurrent thing in military branches. Okay, so this gives production efficiency retention, production efficiency cap, as I alluded to. Okay, you get more consumer good factories, though, so that's bad. Um, the other side of that is going to give you consumer good factories as well. Negative 20 production efficiency retention, but will increase growth in base. So... If you want to switch up your industry, your production lines quite a bit, this might not be the path for you. If you want to stick with kind of like 
similar production types, similar tanks, guns, and planes. Maybe this would be it. Production efficiency retention? No, it would be the opposite. So if you switch variant types, you'd keep, you'd retain after the switch. But your production efficiency base would be less. I think that this is the one, clearly the one that you should go. Because when you're upgrading your guns, you're going to retain 20%. And you're not worried about base unless you're starting a whole new production line. Factory output, 5%. Yeah, I definitely think unless they rebalance this, this is the one to go. And this, all this stuff is very important in an OP build. Why do you like the trains must run on time focus? Was that a historical feature of Italy in World War II? Okay, so there's an army branch. Preserve army traditions, a bandits war. You can focus on tankettes, so you could go light tank. Probably be better in the uh, AI, going up against the AI. Self-propelled guns. And they did have um, some self-propelled guns, and uh, they do have quite large weapons on them. So that's pretty cool. So you get... I think it was mostly SPAT. Maybe... I didn't see too much SPG, so that would be portable artillery. I think it was mainly anti-tank guns. And this one is large, so this must have been late in the North Africa campaign. Divisioni Alpine, they did, they had, so they had it separated out. They had mountain divisions and they had alpine divisions. So I don't know if that means forest divisions as opposed to mountain divisions, but they had eight or ten of each, which is not really simulated in Hearts of Iron 4. So hopefully they get the alpine divisions there and make that a separate division than the mountain divisions. And hopefully there's more of a nerf to... I don't know, a boost in the Alpine divisions. I don't know what they are comprised of or what the point is. Uh, do the mountain divisions have skis, but the Alpine don't, or is it vice versa? I have no idea. Manny, you changed your profile. I love it. The size of the tree expected is like five times the base tree. We showed it up above. It's massive. And they've blurred out the alt history side of the tree. Mussolini said the trains will run on time, but did they? That's my question to you. I have no idea. Uh, Reggio Esercito. Division speed down or down. This is quite a nerf. You want to address this right off the bat. Because you have war early. Back to the army branch. Army primacy is still at the top. If It is a 35-day focus now. And right below it, there are two options. Will you keep a traditional warfare approach or will you go for mobile warfare? I think in a multiplayer game, since Germany has buffs to tanks, you go traditional warfare and you focus on navy and air. And you just focus on speed bumps. So to preserve the army traditions, this is most, I'm speculating at this point, is the meta. It's going to be the MP meta side. Division org goes up, recovery rate, and defense goes up. That's important. Because Italy is defending behind the spearheads, the tank spearhead of Germany. Uh, one times 75 cost reduction of grand battle plan. That is balanced out by a bandits war. Um, let's see here. So you can switch. Okay, they allow you to make a move into Mobile Warfare Doctrine. So this would be an OP build for an AI game. Truck and Reconnaissance Company. That's if you really want to RP. You want to make those uh, mobile uh, weapons and make the, the excellent uh, Italian recon cars. And research bonus for armored car. Okay, so this would probably be a good build for an OP build. This is, would be better for MP. Organizational loss when moving, that's quite good. That might need a, a nerf, actually. Army experience per day? That might need a nerf as well. 
Oh, because you have to make all these new uh, template types. So they just give you army experience gain to make the new template types, which would be useless in, an, in a multiplayer setting where you're using a mod where templates are free. So I definitely think you'd probably go army traditions. We don't know what's behind this, though. So we'll see. Marius, thanks for coming to the live stream. <laughs> they did mostly. Okay. Okay, so he improved the reliability of the trains running on time. All right, I'll take your word on that, guys. Okay, National Spirit, Bandits War, Armored Car Org, 10%. Armored Recon Company Org, 10%. So that's the Armored Car. If you use it in like a regiment or a, a recon company, you'll get a buff to 10% to the organization. Okay, so you could go heavily into armored cars. The problem with that is they don't turn on mobile warfare doctrine because they don't really have a lot of hardness. And is a tank better than an armored car? Yes, so wouldn't you want to stack your production efficiency on the tanks? I don't know. But it, it looks like they're allowing you to RP a lot and make perhaps historical armored divisions. There were six Italian armor divisions in World War II, as far as I know. Armored car production costs negative 10%. That could make it producing armored cars valuable. Reliability, five. Okay, so you can modify it easier. I wonder if they're going to allow us to modify armored car templates. So the base is like 80%. So this would put it up to 85, and then maybe they allow us to change the armored car, like uh, attack or armor or something like that. I, I'm not sure. They haven't announced that yet, though. The central focus of this branch, Super Resercito, represents the military reorganization that Italy undertook in mid-1940. All three military branches have a central focus like this. These focuses require Italy to be at war against a major country. They will remove or significantly reduce some penalties in their related starting national spirits and also grant some XP. Hey, the XP would be good if you need to modify templates. Okay, division org up to counterbalance the nerf that they had. Org lost while moving, that's good. Land doctrine goss, that's good. Okay, so you start off nerfed, and then the reorganization helps you out. That's great. The focuses to the left are mostly focused on boosting special forces stats and cap, so that if you desire, you can make a very specialized army out of the Italian military. Okay, that's cool. That's a lot of RP flavor. Probably won't be used in multiplayer. All right, and now the Air Force branch. Sorry, I skipped through this. But we're just going to go a little faster. I think we're only halfway through here. This is crazy huge, which is great. So it looks like diving bombers, which they historically did not do a lot of from what I can tell. Officer of the Service Royale. So that might give you a commander in your political power tree. Uh, Air Innovations 1. So you could get that boost to Fighter 2 right off the bat. Do they still have Air Innovations 2? Fighter Designs. So if you're in multiplayer, wow. Unless the if these are 70 day focuses, they're going to nerf your fighter three, which is fine, because if you have a bonus, a 100 percent bonus to fighter three, which is what I'm assuming that this will be used for, it's going to it's probably not going to be worth to even start researching it until it's under like 800 days. Or maybe even 700 days, probably more like it will be worth researching somewhere in the 600s other than that if you start researching it at like 800 you might only save like 10 or 15 days which is a paltry amount for hogging a research slot for that long but i'm assuming this is 
one 100x bonus to to air and this is the second to fighter designs so we'll see if they say that the italian royal air force regia aeronautica became an important Propaganda tool for the fascist regime during 1920s and 30s. Italian aviators established numerous records and won multiple world championships. However, the first tests for the Italian Air Force were not that successful. During the Italo-Ethiopian War, even though Italy faced literally no opposition in the air, the Regia Aeronautica lost over 70 aircraft and 100 personnel. Wow. Shortly after, during the Spanish Civil War, more than 700 aircraft and 6,000 personnel were sent to aid the nationalists. The Italian fighter Fiat CR-32, I believe that's a biplane, pro proved superior to the Soviet Polikarpov I-15 and I-16 used by the Republicans. More biplanes, I believe. Which helped making the nationalists have the upper hand both in terms of quantity and quality of aircraft, leading the air ministry to believe that the Italian biplanes could in fact still dominate the skies in major conflicts. Uh, that is false, <laughs> as we know through hindsight. Not long after, they would be proved wrong. The national spirit Regia Aeronautica is meant to represent these factors and as usual can be improved throughout the branch. So they were facing biplanes in the Spanish Civil War and thought that that trend would continue which is not a good conclusion to reach. Manny, I agree. Your great-grandfather was an Italian POW? Did he matriculate to the United States afterwards? Or was he an American who was captured by the Italians? Okay, going down here, so the Regia Aeronautica, they nerfed the naval mission efficiency. That's one of those nav bomber nerfs, because it is Italy's job in kind of multiplayer to get out the navs and then give them to Hungary. Air accident chance plus five. Wow, these are huge penalties, so you want to get rid of this. Similar to the Army branch, Superero is the central focus of the Air Force branch to the right. Expand Rome Flying School and Officer of Service Role will mainly help with some of the penalties representing better trained pilots and better maintenance for the aircraft, which might help prevent some catastrophic air accidents. So I wonder if they're going to make air accident chance increased because it takes, even with zero... Um, God, what's that stat? Even with zero, um, let me look it up here. So if we go to our aircraft, reliability, that's what I'm talking about. So reliability is right here. They've done testing on this and it basically takes about a year for that aircraft to crash on its own, in which case it'll probably uh, die before then anyways. So that's the current meta. You don't touch your reliability, but you boost every other trait. And if you do that in multiplayer and in single player, it will give you huge advantages. Okay. Maybe Italo Balbo could su have survived had there been better coordination between the Regia Aeronautica and the Regia Marina. Okay, so Balbo is the one I said earlier died from friendly fire. And is that because of a lack of radio? I don't know. I don't believe that they had radio in Ethiopia. But I'm not sure if, if and when they ever integrated radio into their armed forces. If you know that, please tell me in the comments below or in chat here. I know that Italy through Lendlease received radar from Germany in 1941. I looked that up. An Italian captured by the Germans. He joined the Allies in 43 and fought when they occupied. Did he make it through that, brother? So you're, are you a first or second generation Italian? They had radio, but it was very sparse. That sucks. Tigre. Okay, so you have some new um 
aces here. So that looks good. I wonder if you uh, start with him. That'd be cool. It sounds like they would have had fighter aces because they had an extensive Air Force history in their conflicts. Standardization. Mutual exclusive with specialization. Modify military industry. Air equipment experience cost plus 25%. Okay. All aircraft equipment, negative 5% though. So if you just want to spam out equipment and send it to Hungary, this would be the way to go. So this is the MP style most likely. Are they both special? Standardization as opposed to specialization. So they're mutually exclusive. Air equipment experience cost negative 50. All aircraft equipment production cost 5%. So air experience, equipment experience cost, does that mean upgrading the plane? I'm pretty sure. So if you need cheap upgrades to the plane, which you don't if you follow my Italy guide, because you can get a lot of air XP uh, if you build the Air Force properly, then you shouldn't need this. I would probably go for standardization and get the air production costs lower as well. Consumer good factories 1% in both areas. So it's going to be important to get total mobilization. Three times 50% research bonus for aircraft. That would be pretty cool to get. At the bottom part of the tree, you will have multiple aircraft templates, air warfare bonuses, and production bonuses. Oh, your first is so grandpa there came to the U.S. afterwards. That's cool, man. My my uh, my family's been in this country for like 300 years. We're pretty sure we can track them back to the signing of the Declaration of Independence. So I don't have a rich cultural history like that. I guess you could say I just have a American cultural history. I wish that pieces of equipment were more accurately represented the different qualities from their countries of origin. For instance, the 90 millimeter AA gun that Italians used was one of the best. 90 millimeter, so equivalent of an 88. And I correct me if I'm wrong, George, that's the one that they were mounting on trucks, right? So that would be a heavily versatile gun. You could use it in a direct fire role as well as a... Uh, air roll ground to air roll i think in terms of italian arms they had a pretty crappy list of machine guns but in terms of big guns they had small quantities but they were pretty good from my memory i'm not entirely sure and now we have a naval branch. So I largely ignore the naval branch because you can get a lot done with just uh, upgrading your existing Navy. But for naval RP, I'm going to skip over this. I'm not a huge naval guy. Um, but it looks like uh, you need to get rid of the five spirits that were at the beginning of, you know, the spirit section in the beginning of the game because this is a nerf. This looks like it's a pretty big nerf, so by war, you want to get rid of this. Okay, you get the chance to stockpile fuel, perhaps uh, allowing you to have a bigger navy. As I said before, you don't want to go big because you'll run out of fuel real quick. You want to go more narrow and upgrade the ships that you do have. That would be more efficient. Naval cooperation programs, okay. And you're going to get all the... If you're a naval guy... You're going to get all the upgrades. So I saw this previous, but let's see if they list it here. I don't want to violate the NDA here. Mini subs, it's right here, the midget subs. So they had the midget subs like Japan, and they, and they also had like the man subs. So like you're in like a scuba suit. And you're like riding uh, basically a torpedo. That would be cool if they had that somehow represented. It, I haven't seen anything like that yet. But the midget subs, maybe you could RP that the midget sub would be that thing. I, I think they're a pretty low impact. I think that they are used in Gibraltar. They tried to sneak in there and blow some stuff up there. 
They had some Italian commandos with midget subs. I'm pretty sure like frogmen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they only like made a hit on like a a transport craft or something like that. All right, continuing on here, export midget submarines. <laughs> Who do they export them to? Yugoslavia? What's Yugoslavia going to use them for? Proper carriers refit civilian ships. So they did have one civilian ship that was refitted with seaplanes. I don't know how many seaplanes. That was their one quote unquote aircraft carrier. It didn't sound much like a aircraft carrier. And then I believe they had two that they were one where they were building. And the other one, I'm not sure if they were just in the design process of. Okay, so you can refit civilian ships. One 100x research bonus for carriers. So that would be uh, non-historical if you went that. The Italians were very capable of designing excellent pieces of gear. I agree, George. The 90 millimeter... I like playing having the 90 millimeter and Panzer, Panzer Corps because it is a game changer. All of a sudden you're like, <laughs> I got you, whatever, like you're going up against Lees and there you're like fly swatting them basically. The 90 millimeter, the Beretta MP38, etc. Their economy just couldn't produce a lot due to them being mostly agrarian and corrupt. Gonzalo, I haven't seen you in a hot minute, brother. How's it going, dude? So good to see you, Gonzalo. And in Alexandria. Oh, yeah, they got in the port of Alexandria. Had a little fun over there, did they? They had frogmen that sunk quite a few ships successfully. That's cool. So the frogmen probably sunk more ships than the Italian Navy did. George Kilgore, I love that SMG. Yeah, they did have good uh, SMGs, but as George alluded to, incredibly small numbers, low impact. And then were you going to get ammo for that SMG? I'm not sure. If I remember correctly, the SMGs uh, were not well supplied with ammo. Because as we said previous, it was the 1891 version of their rifle that they went with, largely. Okay, so we got some carrier stuff. So this is going to be RP. Here's your destroyer. Uh, this one's like almost fully kitted out. This is like an OP destroyer here. What's the cost here? 1500 That's really expensive in terms of a destroyer. But with the naval rebalance and the hitboxes uh, being different, you might be able to have naval and naval combat hit the, um, the capital ships easier than just the destroyers. So if the hitboxes are balanced more, in other words, if your screens don't die first in naval to naval combat, perhaps it would be better to make a better destroyer. So maybe that's what they're displaying here. The focuses in between will grant some more dockyards, research and naval combat bonuses and templates, culminating with Flotilla di Avazione, which is the ultimate focus to help you dominate the seas. Granting, among other things, a significant amount of dockyards, including in certain states in North Africa, Iberia, and France, if controlled by Italy and boosting some of your admirals so that you can protect Italian power beyond the Mediterranean. So this might be good in multiplayer uh, if you add more dockyards to North Africa. And it does say um, North Africa here. So then you wouldn't have to build that yourself. Because largely... Um, you're researching planes for the Axis, and then you're trying to get your economy strong so that you can transition into building things for Germany. Infrastructure, ports in North Africa, airports in North Africa, airports in Greece, airports in Sicily, in Southern Italy, so that you can get that air dominance and get that supply dominance. Okay, continuing on, you have another variant. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, here's a cruiser model. Maybe they're displaying the stats. You know, as I said before, I'm not a big stat guy, so I'm not quite sure which stats are different here. The light attack is only three. 
That seems different. So they may have nerfed light attack. Anti-air is two. That seems quite low. So maybe they nerfed that as well. Not entirely sure. Okay, the cruisers have a better anti-air stat with the same amount of anti-air on it, mounted on it. The light attack of the cru Okay, so they're making it worthwhile to build cruisers, I would assume. Let's look at the cost difference. Uh, the cost difference is 3x, and the light attack is more than 3x. If I did my math correctly. Whoa, 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 no, the cost is way more. A little brain dead right now. I've been talking for quite a while. Let's go to calculator. That is my calculator. All right. Sorry about that. Hit a button. So if you go 47, 46 into 1500. You have three, so it is three times more expensive to produce this cruiser, but the light attack is way more than three times. It's like five times more. Cred, if you're still watching, this looks like cruiser meta, brother. Because the AA attack is also more than double. That looks like it's almost 3x, but the light attack scales uh, way greater. And this is with level two everything. And you have more armor as well. So, okay, so cruisers look to be more viable. Uh, I'm not sure how much steel you need. It looks like it's just one. Massive boost to uh, cruisers there, it looks like. Many battle for the Mediterranean by Massint Massintre? Thanks, George. Um, you can check it out if you dig deep into my YouTube channel. Uh, but basically, it's an Elgato Wave 3 mic. You can check that on on Amazon. And uh, I use levels on OBS so that I use a min and a max. Um, I was trying to help out another YouTuber last night. Um, he's having a lot of audio problems. And I just I emailed him and I was like, hey, you need to get my setup. Not that my... You know, I, I do have a lot of pops in terms of uh, my voice, like uh, not my voice, but my breathing. Some people will comment on that, like like you can hear my breathing a lot of the time. So I, I still have a lot of work to do, but I think the equipment is good enough to where I should be able to get there. If if I get a little help and deep dive into it better, I can I can upgrade my audio even more. I think Feedback Gaming has the Wave 3 as well. I'm not sure. I think I saw that on one of his live streams. It's a great mic. McIntyre? Yeah, Elgato makes great streaming equipment. There's a uh, audio deck as well, but it's like 300 bucks. And it's like, why am I going to spend that if I can't even, I don't even know how to use it. I'm not, this isn't like my vocation, like audio, video, stuff like that. It's so like, I'm just learning all this on the fly. But anyway, let's get, let's get back to it. Okay. Now let's skip the political branch for a moment and let's jump to the far right part of the tree to talk briefly about the foreign politics branch. Okay. You have the Pact of Steel here. So if you go historical, you have to come down here. Request control of French territories. So I think that's from v, Vichy France, I'm assuming, because so you're taking it from that government. So you would not go this historically. War with France. Uh, they were brought into the war by Germany, though. So I guess if you're doing like a early war, you could do this. And then you should be brought into the, the war with the UK by Germany as well. 
If you go like Italy first, maybe you can cross over this way. And then the far right here, Spanish-Italian alliance. We'll see what that does. Demand the Balearic Islands. So this is a little changed. But this is largely that looks the same. Albanian oil. I wonder if they have a lot of oil in Albanian. Okay, here's Albanian occupation. So if you go the historical branch to the far right, and they're leaving out the new political branch that they're they're leaving hidden. So this is the far right, and, it, and just to the left of this was all blurred out by the devs. In this branch, which is shared with other alt history paths, you can first decide to antagonize Yugoslavia by getting claims in the Dalmatian coast and sending an ultimatum to them. Or you can seek to find reliable allies in the Balkans, potentially Yugoslavia, Romania, and Bulgaria. At the leftmost part, where we have the Albanian sub-branch, in which you will send an ultimatum to Albanian, just like usual, but then you can... Also, slightly boost the oil extraction there. Support Albanian irredentism for some fast claims in Albania. Inform the Albanian fascist militia, which apart from unlocking the colonial police occupation law that we discussed earlier in Albanian states, will also increase the Blackshirt division cap and spawn a few divisions. That sounds very useful, even in a multiplayer setting, if you can pick that up quick. Um, not... Quite sure. Here's the Italian irredentism. So they're talking about that. So can you get there from Pact of Steel and play historical? I don't know. Let's look further. Support Albanian irredentism. Okay, I wasn't even looking at that correct. So this is Albanian irredentism. So Albania must be fully controlled by Italy. The focus will cancel if the requirements are not met. Gains claims on Kosovo, and Macedonia, and Attica. It's 35 days. The following effects will be applied if Albania is a subject of Italy. A subject. That means you didn't annex them. They're your puppet? Yes, this is if, if they're puppeted. Does it look like you get a choice? So you don't just annex them. Albanian occupation. It sounds like you puppet them off instead of annexing them. And then Albania, the puppet, gets claims on those territories. So if you keep them as a puppet, that would make this, the puppet stronger. Gains fascist influence, which gains, which grants daily fascism support point one zero acceptance of fascist diplomacy for a thousand days gets event uh, italy is influencing her politics maybe i'm completely reading this wrong but it looks like the only choice that you have is to puppet through focus tree and not annex through focus tree and then the puppet gets claimed so if you attack from their territory they can gain cores so this nerfs Bulgaria in multiplayer because it's typically you use the Bulgarian cores to claim, get uh, their cores on Macedonia and in part of Greece. So actually you could chop it up both ways and Italy could give Kosovo to Albania but Bulgaria could take Macedonia and then Albania could take Attica. And then potentially Italy would get more resources through trade with her puppet. That's what I'm thinking. Manny, are you talking about the current one or the new one? All right, so this is where they were talking about Nationalist Spain has two volunteers or more from Italy. Corpo di Truppe Volontere uh, gains volunteers in civil war. Avianzone Legionaria, which grants ground bombing, targeting, escort efficiency, interception, mission efficiency. Two fighter wings and one tactical bomber wing become active in Latium. Unlocks decision Sede Aquila class destroyers. 
So this is Spanish Civil War, I'm pretty sure. The former support nationalist Spain now has slightly more appealing effects. Okay, so you send volunteers over and then you get this stuff. So this is going to help you grind more and give you more air experience, which I don't even think Italy needs at that point. So this is definitely something to look at for multiplayer because you could grind so, so well. So they might want to nerf this if you have an MP mod. Um, so it looks like they give you these tax, 40 tax and two fighters in Latium, which is in Spain. That's handy. The three sub branches in the middle are the juicy part of the foreign affairs branch with Pact of Steel and Italy first. Having seen just a few structural changes and minor additions here and there. Okay, so we talked about this a little before. Uh, looks like you can get claims on Turkey. War with Greece, this would be historical. And the war with Greece was in October of 1940. A historical would be befriend Greece. And like I said, I'm not sure that you'd ever do war with France or war with the UK unless you're doing Italy first OP rush. The third sub branch is the Stressa front one in which Italy guarantees Austrian independence and can oppose to the Anschluss and start a war if Germany presses the issue. Oh boy which will potentially lead to Italy getting closer to the UK and France, which can in turn be used later to negotiate some colonial concessions in East Africa and force the Allies to recognize certain Italian claims in the Balkans. Okay, so there's a pathway to go Allies. I don't think I'd use this in an OP build because you can't take Germany on too early because you're not powerful enough. You can then ratify the stress up front and seek closer cooperation with your friends, with your new friends, which you will need in order to face the natural enemy of capitalism and imperialism, the Soviet Union. Uh, the new one, I don't think we're seeing most of it because it's all blottoed out here. So we'll see. And they can always change this as well. So I'm sure the devs will watch this live stream. So if you have... Anything that you wanted to say in the comments below, any suggestions or in the chat right now, uh, throw out some suggestions. I know it's uh, kind of painful for the devs to get a lot of negativity, so please don't be negative. Just offer uh, some ideas and uh, yeah, make your voice heard. I do think that they listen to people. I think that it's tough though, because on Facebook, there's so much negativity and they've said that before in past dev diaries so yeah definitely be nice if you have a point back it up with evidence back it up with a, a good laid out argument but don't use negativity that's not going to be well received and now let's go to the political branch okay so manny this is what we were talking about earlier it's kind of blurred out here okay so i think they did this on purpose so that we can't quite tell what's going on We'll go through the focuses in a moment, but first we need to talk about the main system for Italy. Mussolini's missions, or as someone in the team nicknamed them, Missionlinius. Missionlinius? The main purpose of this system is to both represent the growing ambition of one of the most infamous fascist dictators, while also being a tool with which to help guide new players towards making beneficial decisions and preparing for the conflicts to come. A Missiolini will usually pop up around January, June with a few exceptions and consist of an event in which you are presented with Mussolini's demands, activating a mission. You'll need to complete the mission before it times out. Otherwise, you have failed the Duce. We want the system to offer some challenges and reward players, not to punish people for not doing whatever some random fascist guy wants them to do. So while succeeding on the, these missions, will grant some appealing rewards, which can vary depending on the theme of the mission. Failing them will all only have mild penalties. So you should never feel forced to do something you are not interested in, especially during mid to late game when these missions might get a bit more crazy. So crazy because mid late game, you're microing a lot it, or maybe the missions themselves are crazier. 
like Mussolini gets more desperate and is like, go assassinate Churchill or something like that. Who knows? Long story short, Mussolini has ambitions, many ambitions, and he wants you, dear player, to fulfill them. Spoiler alert, you're about to see a lot of whip stuff, so bear with me. So that means that this could be altered, I'm assuming. This is Road to 56. They uh, copied the mod. That's probably much welcome because everyone loves Road to uh, 56. What aspect of it? Is it the mini game? It's like they made Italy a starting point for new players. Well, yeah, I think that even though the focus tree for Italy was small before, it's tricky because you have to chain everything exact in my opinion because italy does not have a big economy with a lot of resources so it's very unforgiving um we'll see if this is a starting point for new players uh but that would mean that there would be a lot of buffs no matter where you go uh and that might be the case you know i i don't know we'll see how it plays out They copied the Strasse front from Road to 56. As you already know, Italy starts the game at war with Ethiopia. So in the first Missolini, which will pop up a couple of weeks after game starts, Mussolini will ask you to make some actual progress in the war after the end of the Ethiopian Christmas offensive. In this case, you have two options. You can opt for a major offensive to try to advance by all means necessary, or you can choose a more methodical approach. Be wise on your decisions because it will affect the deuce's expectations and the time you have to show him that your wise strategy is producing the desired results. Um... I think in Ethiopia from the south was Graziani, and he had a more direct approach while it was Bono in the north who had the more uh, methodical approach. And it turned out that Graziani with more of a uh, an aggressive approach was the better of the two. And as you know, Bono was quite old by even by this time. Um, so it sounds like they're delineating between the two different strats in Ethiopia and you could adopt an overall strat. I think that they went with the more careful strat and then eventually upgraded uh, Graziani to field marshal or something like that to get more aggressive and, and end the war quicker. Okay, and Toto, end of Christmas offensive. So they still have more building. This looks quite plain. So they need to add flavor text here. Um, debug Mussolini's faster attack. So yeah, this is all stuff that they're still building. So we'll see how this goes. If it's still under construction, let's uh, go through it here fast. So it doesn't look like we're going to be able to glean, glean a lot of information about the Mussolini's missions. Back to the political branch, these first three focuses are a bit special in the sense that they cannot be completed manually. Instead, they will be auto-completed based on your success or failure on the first missions. Conquer the North and conquer the South. Succeeding in both missions before time is out will auto-complete solid progress. If you fail in at least one of them, you will have to choose via event to auto-complete either the focuses at the sides. A struggle in Ethiopia, the Abyssinian fiasco, solid progress. So obviously you want solid progress to go down the middle here. So this is a slower road. Uh, this is a slower war, perhaps. Perhaps this is like a complete military breakdown and solid progress is like if you're just running him over. So I would assume that 
Perhaps Ethiopia is they're getting their own focus tree. Perhaps Ethiopia is going to be stronger and you're going to have smaller divisions and there's going to be more micro in the Ethiopian war. We'll see. Oh, we found Triumph in Africa. They buried it down here. So these autocomplete so they don't take political power. Servizio Informazione Militare. That looks like a spy agency. Triumph in Africa typically increased stability in the old focus tree. Colto al Duce. So this might give you some black shirt divisions. I'm not quite sure. Devaluate the Lira. So does that give you consumer good factories? I'm not sure. Does that mean that you're going for more gold standard stuff? So that strengthens your economy, perhaps. Solid progress is what you want if you're going historical, okay? Uh, fascism popularity increases, war support increases, stability increases. Political power, okay? And it looks like it's a Buddha focus tree badge. Mr. T, what up? I'm glad you're on summer break, brother. You can show up to the live stream. One of these days, I'm going to have to figure out how to live redirect. Or should we do it today? Do an ad hoc stream right now and I'll live de redirect to you. Mussolini's grand grandson, no joke. Oh, he currently plays soccer. That's that's interesting, Marius. Romano Floriani Mussolini. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, struggle in Ethiopia might be useful if you're aiming for an alt history fascist or monarchist run, but it's still not the end of the world if you go to historical, but you failed the missions and had to autocomplete this focus. You could still go down the historical path. Okay, so that's nice. So if your skill level is not that high, you can still head back to the historical path. But this is not good. Stability going down. Fascism is going to hit stability as well if you have negative fascism. The Abyssinian fiasco is what you want if you're thinking of taking Italy towards a completely different path. This focus is not available with BBA, but thought it would be good to show it here for structural purposes. This focus is not available without BBA. Okay, so you have to have the DLC for this. So there'll be a base uh, focus tree and then one that you get that's expanded with uh, by blood alone. Oh, guys, go check out Mr. Terry History right now. Watch all of his videos. Just watch a playlist all the way through. Plus, he also has a gaming channel and he likes to play really cool games that I enjoy as well. What were you playing the other day? You were playing, so like a month ago, you were playing Mario. You were playing that uh, racing game. And then what was the game you were playing last night? Or was it the night before? I'm completely blanking. But anyway, check Mr. Terry history out. Okay, so if you get the fiasco, really bad things happen. Servizio Informazione Militari, if you have La Resistance, completing the focus, Servizio Informazione Militari will immediately create an intelligence agency for Italy, granting an extra operative slot and unlocking a new operative. So they're still producing the portraits. So that's kind of what I thought they were going with this. Okay, so that's always a huge nerf to Italy. So in multiplayer, you want to get a spy agency so that you can get collabs on Yugoslavia. You want two collabs, perhaps a uh, collab on Greece. Well, this helps it, uh, Italy because you get the spy agency for free. I think it costs five civs for 30 days, which doesn't sound like a lot, but is a lot. So if I was just building civilian factories with uh, those five civs, 
it probably represents in those 30 days a quarter to a third of a civilian factory which over time kind of ruins your snowball a little bit but it's not like worth a whole civilian factory oh you're playing civ revolution that's right that's what i saw you play the other day and you do track mania and destiny i am not that into destiny but i like the civ rev and the track mania which is odd because i do like first person shooters but i've never been a destiny guy i've been more of like a PUBG guy so if you ever want to play PUBG, uh it kind of has a high skill cap though and i'm not that great but i've been playing PUBG a lot with my friends in the last few weeks and practicing quite a lot so i might have some PUBG content coming out just uh just casual play but i really like that game in its present state Okay, after your triumph in Africa, you have a selection of focuses to help you out with the post-war situation. Consumer goods and compliance bonuses, decisions to deal with the local rulers. Okay. Once triumph in Africa is completed, a new system will be activated, balance of power. So I was looking at this the other day, and it does look interesting. So are you fighting between the fascists and Victor Emmanuel III? Let's read. Balance of power is a new feature accessible through the main political view once active that provides a modular and generic system for a slider that can be driven in almost any way and provide many different outputs. Watch out. Very WIP user interface ahead. God, what is WIP? Something in production? In production? Watch out in production? I don't know. So they're still balancing this and coming up with it. So I'll probably skip it a bit. So you could use political power and you could take over the Ministry of Justice, Foreign Affairs, Education, Corporations. Probably get air XP, probably get naval XP, probably get army XP. Hold a military parade. Deactivate BOP. I'm not sure what that is. In the image above, you can see a slider with a certain threshold and an icon at each extreme. Okay, so you have Mussolini and then you have. I don't know, that still looks fascist. Not sure what that is. Representing the Grand Council of Fascism to the left and the deuce to the right. The value of this slider can be modified via effects, flat changes or modifiers daily or weekly changes, making the slider move towards one side or the other. The bubbles represent thresholds. Once the slider value uh, passes a threshold, effects can be triggered and modifiers can be activated. In, an, in Italy, there's a bubble in the middle of the slider that represents the neutral range, not belonging to any particular side and having no effects or modifiers whatsoever. However, by default, the Italian balance of power starts already in favor of Mussolini, activating the modifiers in the rightmost green bubble. Only one threshold can be active at the same time. So each time a new threshold is reached, the new modifier replaces the former one from the previous bubble. Okay, one of the modifiers here is consolidated power of the deuce modifier. Political power gain 7%. Stability, 2%. War support, 2%. This is really good if you're able to get there quick. So the one thing that I like with Hearts of Iron 4 is they didn't overdo the events and decision mini games because it does add a lot of micro. But if you like to do it, if you're a micro person, you have it available. And largely you're trading political power, which you need to build your armed forces and your military staff for... Um, more minor bonuses so you can either build your military staff or you could go for um, the events and decisions or some sort of hybrid of that but the point of me saying this is you can ignore it and it doesn't ruin the game and it's fine so i like that aspect or you can go through it and you're kind of rolling the dice of whether uh, you do the these uh, mini games properly or not so you'll get bonuses or not uh, depending on how you play them 
So I like that aspect of the game. I expect this to be the same. I expect that you should largely be able to just ignore this if you want. So it's just basically a bonus for RP. Uh, any project managers? W WIP acronym all the time. What is it? Work in progress. Dude. Okay, that probably should have been a little more obvious. Terry's not good at Battle Royale games. Neither am I. And what's weird is, like, I'm not good with assault rifles, but I'm good with snipers for some reason. But, yeah, ARs kind of escape me. And then anything short range is just like spray and pray anyway. Thanks, Marius. Okay, keep in mind that each balance of power is different, and sometimes you might want to go all in to one of the sides, whereas other times you might be better staying around the middle. In Italy, moving full into the deuces side grants, fairly good bonuses, but also comes with minor penalties to represent the issues of having one unchecked authoritarian figure meddling in literally every possible military affair. Okay, so they're saying Mussolini was a micromanager, which was most likely the case, which micromanaging is never good for those of you in the chat that are project managers. However, moving too much towards the Grand Council side is extremely dangerous if you want to keep your political leader in charge, which Mussolini does grant political power, so you probably want to keep him in charge unless you're doing some RP stuff. As you see, Mussolini can be ousted by the Grand Council of Fascism if the balance of power moves too much towards their side. However, this is not even the worst case scenario. If Italy reaches the last threshold in the Grand Council side, a civil war will start. More on this later. Okay, so I hate civil wars in this game. They really ruin your economy. And you guys, I'm more of a power gamer in this game. So I don't like slowing down my economy, slowing down the war effort, but uh, it looks like it's available, which is great. And this is this is what they're going to do. This is what Paradox is going to do. They're going to tell you you can get rid of Mussolini. And then they're not going to tell you who who they replace Mussolini with. I almost guarantee uh, you Paradox. That's good. You're going to keep uh, Keep some things hidden. Keep Let there be some mystique about uh, the game that you're putting out. I like that. But we'll see if I'm wrong down below, but I don't think they're going to reveal who Mussolini's replacements are. I would obviously assume Victor Emmanuel III is going to be one of the replacements. Scary, right? Well, let's see how we can interact with the slider in order to prevent such a catastrophic outcome. Playing as Italy, there are several ways of increasing, decreasing the balance of power. Okay, certain events and focuses will move the balance of power in one direction or another, just like the first focus in Mussolini branch does. Okay, Colto al Duce. So this was one of the focus trees. Um, party popularity, stability modifier, surrender limit, damage to garrisons, negative 15%. This is what you want right here. And this is after Triumph in Africa. So it's also a 70 day focus, but if you get this much stability, if you need the stability, I would go for it. However, the garrison damage in the surrender limit are not very useful, but if you need the stability, I would definitely go for this. You might have noticed that there are decisions inside the balance of power window. These decisions belong to a regular decision category that has been tagged to be used for this BOP. These decision balance of power. These decisions will also have the BOP in either direction. Here are some examples. Hold a military parade. OK, so you could go back and forth on that. Um, there are also certain advisors. OK, so here are the hierarch advisors that will move the balance of power towards the Grand Council. So the Grand Council, although being fascist, are they also non aligned? This is going to be interesting how this uh, works out here. Uh, 
Each hierarch is cheaper than your regular advisor. All of them provide 5% daily political power and 0.05% fascism support in addition to the modifiers granted by their actual ministry position. So this makes them quite attractive, including it only takes 75 political power to pick them up, but you're also going away from Mussolini. So you're replacing Mussolini uh, with someone that will give you political power and uh, increase fascism support, which more increases stability as well as political power and a lot of other modifiers. Fascism support, in addition to the modifiers granted by their actual ministry position, and all are unlocked by a specific focus. If you're desperate, there are BOP decisions for Mussolini to take over the ministry. I'm going to skip through this. And uh, so we kind of know what we can. We have these two choices. You burn political power to get there. But I doubt that they're going to tell us what after you go one side or the other, what exactly happens because they have to keep certain things hidden. So there's the balance of power system. Back to the Italian focus tree. Let's quickly finish the political branch after completing Colto al Duce. This the Mussolini branch opens up. Okay, that this is what I'm interested in. So if you need the political power, I go for this. And then what do you get beyond it? To live as a lion. That looks like so egotistical. I love it. La Bataglia del Grano, La Bataglia del Per la Terra. Perhaps economic increases. The man of province. This looks like a political power thing. Alegi Botaya. Wow, this thing goes on for a long time. To the left, you have focuses mostly related to Mussolini and his traits. And the sub branch right below Colto al Duce is based on the three famous economic battles of Mussolini. So it was, do you support the workers? Do you support the factories, the factory workers? Or do you support infrastructure, perhaps? So this one, to live as lion, gives you political power, always good. Modify trait lion tamer by war support, offensive war penalty st stability modifier. Okay, so that would be good if you're starting wars like you're playing historically and going up against Greece. That actually is pretty good. The national balance of power moves 5% towards Benito Mussolini. If you want to go historical. And then this gives building slots, which actually is good because there should be these, these areas should be at least 90%, I would assume, infrastructure. So you do want to build in these main areas in Italy. Uh-oh, Marius wants me to read the top sections. So you're a mini game guy, Marius. You're back, Malarkey. Good to see you, man. Um, okay. Let's read through it. Last but not least, after some time, the Italian population was really not on board with the war and how things were going in front, not on the Eastern Front, not in the Balkans, and definitely not in Africa. A critical factor that is represented in-game by moving the balance of power towards the council whenever a state owned by Italy is lost to an enemy. Losing a colony or non cord state has a very small impact and will only move the balance of power slightly towards the council once. However, losing a core state will not only move the balance of power more towards the council, but will also activate a weekly modifier that can be stacked up to five times, moving the balance of power value towards the council over time. Marius, you are right. So as you start to lose territory, it's more likely that you take Mussolini out of power as it was historically and they assassinate him or uh, lynch mob him, whatever you want to call it. So that is quite good. So if you're playing historic, perfectly historically, you should start losing territory and then it's more likely that Mussolini gets the ax. So that is interesting. Thank you for, for telling me about that. Okay, we're starting to, to wrap up here. 
Mussolini can become pretty scary if you complete all the focuses related to his cult of personality. Okay. So he changes into uh, Laser Eye Mussolini. So you get more political power by 5%. Recruitable population factor 15%. Stability 10%. So this means that you can't let Italy go late game in multiplayer. You probably want to wrap it up. You probably want to take out North Africa by 43 or something. 42, maybe. He gets fascist support. Economic trade and conscription law cost goes down. I think that was already there. Lion Tamer. So you get more stability, war support. Less damage to garrisons. So if somehow you're taking a lot of territory as Italy or perhaps Germany gives you territory, you take less uh, damage to your garrisons. So that would have multiplayer implications if you got to this. I don't know how hard it's going to be to get to that, though. Puppet costs negative 10%. Subject manpower requirement, 15%. So you get more manpower. Master impact, 0.1. Militia organization is buffed again. So it balances out the negative militia organization so that the militias are viable. Because ne negative 10%, I would, I would say, is probably not too viable to have a lot of militias unless you get this. Then it makes uh, militias probably a better speed bump. Sagittario, Battle of the Grain and Battle of for the Land. You must read anything? Are you saying I must read everything? Okay, so Battle of the, the Land, Terra, and Battle of the Grain. Grano. I'm learning Italian, guys. I know Italian. Grano. It's probably Grano, like a roll your R thing. I have no idea. I don't speak Italian. Political power gain 10%. Consumer good factory is negative 2 that's really good. War support increase? I don't know which one is better. I think that there are other ways to boost your political power. So I think I'd rather just go uh, the lion. To live as a lion. And look at this. This is my favorite focus tree so far. This is going to be it. Maybe I'll make the thumbnail of this video, this focus tree badge right here. We'll see. Okay, these two branches will merge further down for the final late game sub branch in which you will find claims, war goals. Keep in mind that these things are now more relevant with the Peace Conference rework and some more useful manpower bonuses. Il pesque. The fish? Okay, bend the bars. Schedule the Sentinels. But the Ionic Islands? Master of the Aegean. Master of the Mediterranean. So this must give you cores. So realize Roman ambitions was a side decision. This must give you... This must give you cores on... The Mediterranean, like, realize Roman ambition does. That's what I'm going to guess. By blood alone. Big question mark there, so you don't know what that means. Colonial empire. It looks like you could do both of these branches. So I wonder if they're going to rework um, realize Roman ambitions. You go colonial empire... Non-core manpower is 15%. Claims on a lot of things. Okay, so they probably split the claims up to a lot of these different... Like, this might be claims on Greece. 
thinking of like the famous uh, Greece uh, statue. The Colossus of Rhodes, perhaps. Colonial Empire probably gives you cores. Oh, it gives you claims. So it gives you war goals. Gains claim on that st on the state. Okay, so you're able to attack people. It doesn't give you cores. And we are into the last two remaining sub branches shared with other alt history branches. So I can't wait to see what they're doing with realized Roman ambitions. Maybe they won't tell us, or maybe it's just the same as it, it currently is. We'll see. Pataglia. These look like black shirts. D Assalto. Strengthen the black shirts. Milesia Colonial. Banda Coke. Banda Carita. On the left, we have the internal affairs sub branch providing bonuses to stability and war support, PP, and also granting some extra operatives and espionage bonuses. Okay, to the right, we have the Black Shirt sub branch. Security militias provide mostly manpower and resistance bonuses. Battaglia di Assalto unlocks a new support battalion, the Black Shirt Assault Battalion, which will help adding some extra soft attack and breakthrough to your divisions. Both of those are good. Strengthen the Black Shirts, and on the other hand, boost your militia organization, increases the Black Shirts division cap, and spawns a few Black Shirt units. End of the dev diary is juicy, huh? Make a selection to change or add battalion. Oh, you could get a black shirt assault battalion as a support battalion? Why are these both? Oh, paratroopable. Okay, so you could add them into paras. Okay. Strengthen the black shirts. The royal army is far out of bounds. The ways of the old regimes and it has repeatedly shown a disturbing lack of fascist zeal. It is clear that we need to have entire divisions made up of our own loyal black shirts. Create three Kamasi Neri divisions in Latium. Last but so wait, did I get that wrong? Is Latium in Spain? No, Latium south of Rome, right? Okay, I think that that's correct. Last but not least, Malizia Colonial grants some extra nice bonuses to get even more black shirt divisions. Okay. Modify template cap of Camasia Nere by 12. So it allows you to spawn more. And we are done with the Italian focus tree, or are we? There's one last thing I wanted to show you guys. Do you remember that thing we mentioned earlier about a civil war? Well, when reaching the final threshold of the council in balance of power, an event will pop up and trigger the Italian civil war. For this civil war, each side will potentially become a puppet of the faction leader of each side in the war. So if, uh, if the separatists uh, go with the allies, then the separatists would become a puppet of the allies, I would assume. Or, this makes a lot of historical sense, the side that sided with the fascists would become a puppet of, uh, of Hitler, basically, in Germany, which is also what happened historically. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. That fixes a lot. And, uh, wow, this must be a lot of programming. I am really impressed with this. Like, No Step Back was large, and you did the tank stuff, that's great. You you expanded the focus tree, but this fixes World War II. I didn't feel like there was a lot with World War II that was broken about the USSR, but in terms of how like the Allies climbed up Italy and essentially there was a civil war that occurred, it looks like they're working on fixing that aspect because Italy, it's this awkward thing that happens where they basically become two puppets, right? Half of the country is occupied by the allies and becomes the allied puppet and half of the as um actually as manny's grandfather fought on the side of the allies as an italian in world war ii so obviously he was part of that puppet regime on the opposite side 
The Germans had to come in because they saw that the Italians weren't fighting and basically take over the country and make them make the north of Italy their puppet. So, wow, this is crazy good. This is awesome. I feel like uh, Hearts of Iron 4 is going to be able to be played historically really well after this update. Okay. When appropriate, in a historical game, the fascist Italian Social Republic will remain in the Axis and become Germany's puppet, while the breakaway tag, the non-aligned Kingdom of Italy, will join the Allies as the UK's puppet. Fantastic work, guys. 10 out of 10. That needed to happen. Unfortunately, it happened late, but hey, we got there. I'm a patient man. I like they are making more specialist type divisions. Are black shirts even that good? I don't think it's going to be that good. I think it's for historical flavor. And at first, they're not going to be good until you buff Mussolini into the laser eye version. As far as I can tell so far, because it looks to me like all the specialized divisions like the black shirts have a hit of a negative 10 percent organization penalty, which basically makes them no good on the move. You're only going to be good on entrenchments. So I don't think you could push with them at all until you uh, help Mussolini out. Um, where were we? There are a few prefixed state splits based on which states are occupied by enemies when the Civil War starts. The occupiers will also receive an event in which they concede those states to their new Italian friend. That would be cool for multiplayer. If you don't have BBA, you will become the Italian Social Republic fascist. With By Blood Alone active, though, you can also choose to change sides and continue playing as either the Kingdom of Italy or the Italian Republic. So they are adding this to the base game is what they're saying with features that you get from By Blood Alone. Both the Italian Social Republic and the Kingdom of Italy have a custom Civil War branch that will show up in their respective focus trees. Okay, I don't I don't know a lot about this part of history. So I there's not much that I could speculate a lot on. But it looks like there's different um governments that you can instill here. The anti-fascist branch to the left, only playable in BBA active, starts by applying a state modifier in the Italian states controlled by their fascist enemy. The Italian re social republic significantly increases resistance. After that, there are two options based on your choice, monarchist or communist. Okay, so it looks like you have to have a civil war to become monarchist or communist, but it is possible. On the right, the monarchist focus spawned differently infantry divisions, different infantry divisions, significantly more powerful than your militias. Okay. Three infantry divisions, one division Celere in Latium. Marius is a historical player. Next week is Switzerland. Did they say that? They didn't email me that that was the case. Maybe they did. I'd have to double check. There's just so much information. That's why I'm doing this live stream as well, because... I just, it's so much information to go through and it would be so hard to figure out what to edit out and what to include. Uh, I just wanted to do it in a live stream. So hopefully you guys appreciate this and um, like this sort of content. If not, there'll be short form content as well. So stick with me, boys. The communist specific focuses on the left will spawn militia divisions with a new 3D model with BBA and boost the state modifiers mentioned above. Add Gapisti, which grants target sabotage efficiency. And there was a big communist movement pre-war. And I do believe, like Pillbox said above, that... The communists, um, Mussolini was a communist to start with and then switched later to fascism. Probably were pressured by Germany. Okay, so this is the communist guys. All right. 
Grande Revolta Rural not only has the most wonderful donkey icon ever, also available in national spirit size, it also provides some fairly good bonuses and boosts your non-fascist militias. Yeah, I like this icon. This looks really cool. They must have had a really good artist for these focus tree badges. So consumer good factories enables mountain warfare doctrine. Well, this national spirit is active. Okay. So you're better in the hills. Grande Revolta Rural. Wow, that's pretty OP if you go communist. You can at least hold the mountains pretty, pretty well. They're going to have another one. Wow. This one was so big. That's crazy. But I can tell from all the stuff they gave me that it was going to be this big. So we'll see what they delve into next. <clears throat> if they actually go over like who you replace Mussolini with, that'll be interesting. Integrate. Polizia del Africa Italiana will spawn several Ascari divisions in your controlled colonies. Anti-partisan measures help counter the resistance penalties in the state modifier Fronte Militari Clandestino applied in your states by the enemy partisans. That kind of reminds me of like civilization um civ 2 you would get partisans after you'd like conquer a nation and um i'm thinking more of the civ 2 like uh world war 2 mod and um so they would actually pop up units inside of like france after you took france and stuff like that it was pretty cool in this it's all like simulated though i think by resistance which uh, which is less micro intensive I don't think that Civ is, is as much of a micro game than Hearts of Iron 4, so that makes sense. Okay, all within the state has fairly powerful bonuses in exchange for some stability. Last but not least, both branches have an Italian independence focus at the end, which works just the same for each side. It gets unlocked once the Civil War is over, and it will send an event to the Italian overlord requesting independence. If the overlord refuses, the Italian tag will get an independence war goal. Once the war goal is used to declare war, they will get a timed national spirit with useful bonuses against their overlord. Italian demands for independence. Italian overlord removes puppet from Italy, gains granted us independence. Effects if they refuse. Gains independence war goal against Italian overlord. Refuse to grant us independence. So I'm not sure what areas of the map this would affect. But looks interesting. And that was all from me this time for real. I hope that you guys enjoyed the read and are as excited for the upcoming DLC as we are. We'll be coming back to Italy to talk about the alt history paths in the near future. Okay, so that was the path that was blurred out. But for now, make sure to stay tuned for the next Dev Diary where we will talk about Switzerland. Ari Verderce. And they added the uh, focus tree images down below. So... That's what they're going to talk about is the alt history paths. And then perhaps they will tell us who replaces Mussolini. So obviously there's going to be Victor Emmanuel, I would assume. And then I don't know who the communist guy is going to be, to be honest with you. Maybe it'll be one of the generals. I'm not entirely sure. But you have to bear in mind, too, there's going to be an air designer that goes with this as well. So you're going to be able to attach air components. They didn't touch any of that in this de developer diary, but all these expansions are really cool. And here's what I was trying to find. So this is the alt history branch right here, which I'm sure will inc include 
perhaps a fascist line to replace Mussolini, perhaps a communist line to, to replace Mussolini, and non-aligned that will replace Mussolini. And some of you guys were asking earlier how big this focus tree is, like five times the size. Typically, the focus tree was only here. But now we're going like one, two, three, four. Yeah, like five times the size. Five or six times. Italo Balbo? Weekly releases until August. All right, I'm going to be busy. I'm actually going to be gone next week. I'm going to do a vacation. So I'm not going to cover Switzerland. But uh, whatever is the week after that, I'll cover. Uh, I might do a Switzerland video when I come back if it's intriguing enough for me to do. But I might squ uh, skip Switzerland and move on to like the second Italian fo part of the focus tree and Ethiopia for sure. And I am taking another like we're taking all these summer vacations right now. So end of July, I'm taking another vacation as well. The last week in July. So you're going to see less content next week. And you're going to see all this content that I've been putting out this week uh, on my <clears throat> main channel. And then um, let me give you my final thoughts on this. Um, this blows me away. Maybe it's because I'm a, more of an Axis player and more of an Italy player. But this is absolutely 10 out of 10 in my opinion. So you're getting this huge focus tree. You're getting... All these bonuses, music, you're getting um, the new uh, artwork for the individual units. You're getting the plane designer. Um, they fixed World War II so that it's going to play out way more historically. I think that there's going to be a lot of value in this DLC. And then this also changes the base game as well so that the base game will follow World War II and um, have an Axis and an Allied puppet in Italy if it gets to that point. So yeah, this is much welcomed. And um, hopefully we get a lot more Hearts of Iron 4 players. And I hope that they... I hope that what they do is... Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. I'm trying to get onto my YouTube account to show you guys my other YouTube account, and it's not working. Let's see if I can get this. It's doing a verification here. Sorry, completely lost my train of thought. But yeah, what I hope they do is start to... So this might be, to me, bigger than No Step Back because I'm an Italy player and everything's so huge. There's there's massive stuff that they're doing here. Um, but what I hope is that they start integrating the DLCs and paring it down. So make all the old DLCs free, the ones that are like two or three years ago. I know there's a subscription... And that's fine. Um, I'm sure that their marketing is going to have a say in that. But it would be nice to somehow integrate the old DLCs into the base game and just move on. Like just have maybe Man the Guns, La Resistance, No Step Back, and by Blood Alone be the DLCs that are available for purchase or just make a purchase pack that includes everything that's like reasonable, like not a hundred dollars, maybe like 70 or $80. That would be pretty cool, but that's going to be up to their marketing and their, you know, business plan. Um, but this was very unexpected. I, I, this came out of left field for me. And when the devs gave me all the material, I was just like amazed, like, like they're just doing another, like no step back sized, um, thing here but I think that it's even better than No Step Back because it's going to fix more things about the base game that don't make sense about World War II 
A lot of RP flavor here. Italy's all over the place. And in my opinion, I like playing Italy a uh, little more than USSR. Not much, but I like playing USSR. And Italy may become my favorite nation after this. And then going forward, if Italy has this much flavor, you got to redo Germany, Paradox. That's right. If you did all this stuff for Italy, I kind of feel like you should do brown shirts for Germany. You know what I'm saying? Like Germany's the next patch. Germany, Poland. Just like stay in that area. But anyway, here's my other channel that I started on Tuesday. And it's called ESG Finance. And it has nothing to do with gaming. Absolutely nothing. Um, you know, I came out with an announcement that I'm making a move into full-time YouTube. And this channel will largely explain the mechanics behind how I did that. And it does have to do with strategy gaming in that I take strategy gaming game theory principles and I applied it to my personal in real life um, budget. And uh, the this explains kind of the skills that I learned along the way of my my personal finance journey. And I'm just sharing it with you. It's what I did. You don't have to do it. It's not financial advice. It's just describing how I arrived at this position. Obviously, I'm not like making move to YouTube and making $100,000 a year. Obviously, that's not happening. So I need to have um, my finances worked out very strictly, as well as know where my income comes from, uh, from other sources. And Pat, there'll be more videos on like passive income and things like that later. Um, I've got a lot to cover on this channel and I'm super excited about it. I'm super happy to uh, share it with you and watching this channel go from zero subscribers to 14 has already made me super excited. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I'm excited to see uh, the subscriptions go up. Um, so yeah, if you give me subscribers, it really makes my day. Thank you. If you subscribe to this channel, I really truly appreciate it. And, uh, it's going to be fun. We'll see how it works out. Other than that, thank you, Paradox, for everything. Uh, this came out of left field. You know, we had a little lull with Hearts of Iron 4. The player base actually dipped quite a bit. And you can look that up on Steam charts. And I think this will revitalize the game, make the game more fresh. So thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Paradox developers. And thank you for giving me the, the early access uh, NDA material. I really appreciate that too. Um, thank you for including me uh, in some small way on your team. Uh, my background, George, is just um, basically that I had a goal of becoming financially independent three and a half years ago. I achieved that goal last week and now I'm making a move into YouTube because I love doing YouTube and I love playing Hearts of Iron 4. And that's what I really want to do. I did not want to do uh, what my career was. So you could say my background in terms of that channel is not based on a profession. It is definitely being an amateur financial investment enthusiast and applying that to basically, um, for instance, I have zero debt. For instance, I own a house and don't have a mortgage. That's right, zero debt. When I mean zero debt, I mean zero debt. I own an electric car. I drive that around. Uh, the gas prices are meaningless to me. I have solar panels. They 100% power the electric car. And not only that, Tesla pays for my energy on top of that because I purchased the car when Tesla gave free charging and I still have free charging on the Tesla. So things of that make me an amateur financial enthusiast. It has nothing to do with my professional life. My professional life will forever uh, just be that. It'll be forever se separated part of my life, but it definitely got me here and taught me a lot about life. And I learned a lot of lessons from my professional career, but that's all over, baby. It's all YouTube now. Swiss content. All right, Marius, you stuck with me the whole way. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll come out with some of that.
All right, George. Yeah, thanks, man. I would appreciate that. George, you lasted a long way as well. Thanks for coming, Marius. Thanks for coming, George. Uh, you guys have a good day, night, morning, evening, whatever it is where you guys are. I really appreciate you guys following the whole live stream. And uh, please consider subscribing. 